Classic movie making techniques to immerse players even deeper into its tale. Today, I'll do a spoiler free breakdown of the first hour of the game to show you exactly how they do this. Hi, everybody, I'm the Orlando Gamer, and thanks so much for checking out this video. Now, let's get right to the breakdown. Hey everybody, and thanks for joining me, and I want to say real quick that if you are into gaming news and gaming analysis, to hit that subscribe button, and at the very least, if you're a fan of this game or this breakdown, hit the like button, that really does help my channel. And let's get into the breakdown right now. I am Jin Sakai, nephew to the great Lord Shimura. And I am no coward! It's nothing new to say that video game graphics have become so realistic that sometimes it's hard to tell them apart from actual Hollywood movies. That's especially going to be the case next month when Sony releases its PlayStation 5 and Microsoft releases its Xbox Series X game consoles. But when you combine those advanced graphics with actual movie making cinematography skills, the results are usually some of the more high profile video games and more popular video games that have been released on these next generation consoles. Perhaps the similarities to movies and cinematography have never been as blatant as in Ghost of Tsushima, the video game released in July and being played by millions of players around the world. Director Nate Fox paid homage directly to legendary film director Akira Kurosawa who is known for his black and white samurai films of the mid 1900s. A mode within the game allows players to play through it in black and white grainy film reminiscent of Kurosawa's classics. But the nod to Kurosawa is just the beginning of Fox's efforts to emulate some of the great movies of the past and use skills involved in movie making to build this game. The effort to establish the storytelling technique starts very early with a pair of scenes that are in the first roughly 10 minutes of the game. At the very start, we see Jin Sakai, our hero, and several other samurai running, sprinting, down into a chasm, into the abyss, into what you, whatever you want to call it, but the battle is waiting for them at the bottom. Uh, in the lead up, you see fire being launched at them, so they're basically going down into this, this pit of flames, trying to figure out kind of what the judgment is going to be when they get down there. Now, he makes it past it by sticking with his mentor and sticking with the hero that, he, that he's had for so long. Now, once he's cut off from his hero, we see him wake up in another place that, he's, that he's not familiar with. And again, once again, you have to make your way down into the unknown, which is a town that's been under siege. And again, you're going down into this unknown. You're learning more about Jin Sakai as you go along and you meet your first companion. Inside. No. How are your wounds? Can you run? I... I think so. Where's my sword? Not here. You're on! I think it's important to point out that even in movies, these methods and these strategies are not blatant. You won't see a part of the movie where the director is holding your hand and saying, we're going to go up this hill, so you should, your emotions should be ready for something. But we've been trained as moviegoers to let our emotions follow what the director of a movie has done. That's the same thing that's happening in video games. Now, very early on in the game, as in many games, Sakai faces some adversity that he has to return from. So what happens? The directors have us 
playing the role of Sakai, going up a huge, huge amount of stairs toward our destination. Now, as we go up there, we are abandoned by our companion halfway through, meaning that we have to make it to up this hill on our own. Again, these are strategies that movie makers use all the time and more and more game makers are starting to use. Now, while you're playing the game, as I was playing the game, it felt like, yes, I'm trying to recover Sakai from the adversity faced before. And so I'm kind of going on this journey up these stairs with this main character in my control. Now, after the ascent, we face off in one of our first major battles of the game. Nephew, Lord Shimura. And what happens when you lose this. that battle? Well, of course, you're thrown down into a pit. I have to stop here to say that I don't think any of this is accidental. I think these are deliberate choices made by the game makers and the storytellers. Now, after you fall into the pit after the battle, there's a little bit of story and exposition that happens. And when you take control of the, of the player again, you are him as a kid. Now, this is before he's become a samurai, before he's dealt with all this adversity that we've already gone through in the game. But again, at the beginning of the scene, you start at the, at the bottom of a long flight of stairs. And in order to become that samurai that we see earlier in the game, you have to go up the stairs, walking by the people who have helped you in your life, and emerge at the top with your master. I couldn't save him. I was a coward. Jin, you are a samurai. He died because of me. I'll cut this scene short just in the interest of keeping as much of this, uh, this exposition secret as possible. But you can see what I'm saying here, and this really is, is, a, is just a determination to me anyway, that there is this up and down roller coaster of emotions that are meant to trick the gamer, trick the player, to kind of go through the same emotions that Jin is going through as he, uh, as he you know, embarks on this journey. And again, this is the beginning of the game. Ghost of Tsushima is much more than just a typical role-playing game with a samurai skin added onto it. While there are several elements of role-playing games in this, such as a map with your destinations on them, multiple storylines that you can play, and a really gorgeous world that you get to traverse. Nate Fox's efforts to incorporate Akira Kurosawa's movie making talents and strategies have helped set this game apart. It has been lauded almost universally by critics. The visuals of Ghost of Tsushima paint a beautiful picture. The gameplay takes the best of what's come before it and adds in samurais and swordsmanship. But a differentiator for this video game remains its story and the way it's been told. That to me is what sets this game apart and makes it one of the best games of 2020. So there you have it, Ghost of Tsushima, let me know what you think in the comments, and until next time, happy gaming.